Hello guys, Ryan from Husky Moving here at Arlington, Massachusetts. We are a full service residential and commercial moving company. We do disposal, we do handyman work, we do odd jobs, we do picture mounting, TV mounting, we do light landscaping, light plumbing, um, fix some cabinetry, hang some blinds. If it involves a house, we try to get it done. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today real quick is um, figuring out and reducing bottlenecks on jobs. Now this is something that I think is one of my giant skill sets, uh, mainly due to experience. In any given scenario, uh, when you're on a job, when you have multiple people doing multiple things, trying to accomplish one goal, inherently there's gonna be bottlenecks. Uh, what I want you guys to do is to try to figure out what those are, identify them first, and then I figure out what they're gonna be, uh, or what you need to do, excuse me, to eliminate or reduce them. So what happens is, <clears throat> when you're on a job, um, let's just say a typical moving job, you're moving from one apartment to another apartment across the city, for example, let's say. Um, so what would be the bottlenecks in this situation? There's a thousand things that could happen, but the, the most common ones are elevators. Uh, elevators tend to be a bottleneck in that they're relatively slow. You can only get a small amount of stuff in there. Um, you have to wait for it to go up. You have to wait for it to go down. If it's locked off, meaning they've locked it off for the moving company, 99% um, of the time what that means is if someone goes down, gets out of the elevator, goes to the truck, the elevator cannot move until that person comes back and takes it upstairs. That's what having a locked out elevator means. It means that it will go to one floor and until someone brings it back up to the other floor, it literally is stuck there, meaning I can't call it from another floor. Most people don't realize that. Most building managers don't even realize that. Um, but what that means is, for example, if I'm packing a truck and I bring the elevator down from the seventh floor to the first floor, go to the truck, and now I'm packing the truck, the elevator is literally stuck on the first floor. And if everyone else is back up on the seventh floor, that elevator can't move until I go back to it and bring it back upstairs. So that's another bottleneck. Um, the person packing the truck is a bottleneck, meaning if I'm packing the truck, you can only go as fast as I can go. So I have to keep up with the move or else everything slows down. Um, in terms of an actual job that happened recently, uh, traffic would be another bottleneck, obviously. Um, parking scenarios, how close you can get to the house. Um, a lot of times people, I don't really understand why, why people will do this, but people will um, park really close to their own house even though they know that a giant moving truck needs to come in and park. And so that would be something where I'd come in and I can't move efficiently because someone has blocked off the front of the house or is close to the front of the house and I can't move next to the curb or I can't move with the trees. There's a million different things that could happen. Um, another bottleneck would be the type of equipment we have, meaning if there's a giant walk within an apartment complex, like let's say, for example, we got to walk out a door and, and walk 400 feet to get to an elevator and then go downstairs and then walk another hundred feet to get to the truck. If we have a limited amount of wheels, then obviously that's gonna be a bottleneck. Um, so for example, in that scenario, we go out with plenty of equipment, but if you didn't have plenty of equipment, let's say you had two guys there, but you only had one two-wheeler, then the one two-wheeler would be the bottleneck because obviously what that means is only one guy can be using the two-wheeler, so by default, the other guy would have to be carrying everything. So in that case, if that were the case, if that was what was going on, we would obviously have one guy running stuff to the truck and then the other guy would be up in the apartment, wrapping everything, disassembling everything, taking everything apart, getting it ready for the other guy to run this to the truck. But you wouldn't have one guy carrying one box while another guy could wheel nine boxes because obviously those two things aren't even close to being um, the same volume of work. So it doesn't make sense for one guy to be carrying one box if another guy can wheel nine boxes it makes the most sense for one guy to be wheeling nine boxes while the other guy is disassembling lamps light bulbs taking off lampshades wrapping artwork packing boxes all of that stuff uh, that would be another bottleneck um, in terms of a job that happened like the other day and this is a small thing it's not it's none of this is like a big deal um, but we had a job the other day where we had two um, there were three separate trailers that needed to be packed with, I don't know how many barriers there were. I want to say like, I don't even know. Let's just say 200. 200 barriers spread out over three um, trailers. So like roughly, I don't know, what's that? 66 per-ish. Uh, and we have four guys doing it. Um, so in this particular instance, 
three of the guys came in from another moving company and then I came in from my moving company. When I came in, I brought in two different four wheelers and two different two wheelers and the other guys didn't show up with any equipment. So what that meant was they had to keep carry each individual barrier by hand over a, a long walking, walking distance. It wasn't close. We had to walk a long way with these barriers and I had wheels with me. So what that meant was I could carry like it started off carrying like three at a time but over time as i got more comfortable carrying more and more it wound up being like i could do like five six seven at a time to the one that they were doing so obviously i was working at a much higher efficiency level because i had the wheels um than the guys were working at and so what we started to do was i would go out, grab as many as I could, wheel them back, and then just very quickly dump them off of my cart and then go back out into the field and grab more and let the other guys who didn't have wheels pick them up and put them on the actual carts and put, sorry, onto the uh, trailers and get them situated on the trailers because it didn't make sense for me to stop what I was doing, take away the efficiency of having that four wheeler with me, which allowed us to carry five barriers at a time as opposed to one, it made the most sense for the guys who had only had the ability to do one barrier at a time to do the actual packing of the um, trailer and have me, because I had the four wheeler with me, go out into the field and just keep making trips back and forth with as many barriers as I could because I could do five for every one that they could carry. So it made the most sense for them to be putting them on the trailers. Does that make sense? I hope um, the other thing... Um, that was going on. And again, this is none of this is a big deal. It's just like something you realize as you get older, how to speed things up. Um, for example, what I noticed was I would come over with, um, there were three separate trailers and they were all kind of situated away from each other. And I would come over with a cartload of, uh, barriers. So I'd have like three to five of them on the cart and I would come over and I would start taking off my four-wheeler and putting them on the ground and then the other guys would come over and rather than going to a different trailer so they could move in and put them on the thing and, and just keep working and then go back out into the field and grab another one they would literally come in behind me and just stand there and wait for me to be done unloading my things which to me made no sense because you had a cart to my left I mean sorry a trailer to my left and a trailer to my right that you could just bring your barrier to and put it right on there and then you wouldn't have to wait at all. But for whatever reason, human beings have this tendency to, I, I, I never understand why people do this, but it's like universal. Like if you ever watch human beings working with it, with each other, they have a tendency to, if one person goes to one area, the tendency is for everyone to go to that area. Even you could have four different rooms that need to be worked on. And if one person goes to the living room, the tendency is for all six people to go to the living room even though it's much more efficient for one person to go to the living room and one to go to the bedroom and one to go to the kitchen and one to go to the basement and all be working in ways that you're not bumping into each other. The tendency is human beings are like ants. They just go in the same direction as the person who went before them went, which if you actually watch out in the field, you'll notice it happening. It happens a lot. And if you can fight that tendency, you can actually greatly um, improve your efficiency. Um, so that would be something that happened on a job that we did recently. Um, so if you guys keep an eye out for the bottlenecks, whenever you start a job, you want to try to, identify very quickly what are the things that are going to slow you down the most what i call the bottlenecks and then how can we break through those bottlenecks or minimize the effect of those bottlenecks so we can get this done as efficiently as humanly possible um <clears throat> so you, another thing that we often do at least on my crews what we do is this is another example when someone's moving into a house um let's say for example they moved into a brand new house and there's two people who have moved into the house, husband and wife. Um, more often than not, they're, this is the first time they've ever been in that house where they actually owned it because they just gained possession of it that morning. So it's not like they've been hanging out here for like weeks just figuring out what, you know, where they want to put stuff. They, they've only been here a couple of times. They've been here to do a couple of walkthroughs during the real estate showings and blah, blah, blah. And now it's moving day and now you're asking them where they where you want them to put their life's possessions like all of their life's possessions where do you want us to put them so inevitably what inevitably what winds up happening is there's a lot of butting heads between the husband and wife about where we're we going to put this where we're we going to put this there's a lot of they don't know where they want to put it because they haven't thought about it they have to identify very quickly where everything they've ever purchased in their life 
they need a place for it. Where do you want the movers to put it? It tends to be very slow going because you'll be like, hey, I have your camping bags from downstairs. Where do you want them? And the husband's going, I don't know, just ask my wife. And the wife's going, I want them in the basement. And then you start walking in the basement and the wife goes, no, wait, I want them in the garage. And then you start walking into the garage. The point of the story is it, it tends to be, it takes a lot of time and you have four different movers asking two people questions. The two people answering the questions don't move as quickly as the four people unpacking the truck. And so by default, there's a lot of inefficiencies there. The point of why I mentioned this is one of the ways you can get around that is you have one guy bringing a box while another guy's on the truck folding pads, while another guy's cleaning the floor of the truck, while another guy's cleaning up tape off the back end of the truck. And so you're bringing in boxes and asking questions in a manner that is keeping up with what the customer's minds can keep up with, as opposed to overwhelming them with four different movers, asking them where they want four different things and having to wait for them to process the four different decisions that need to be made, all of which means that the movers are sitting there holding boxes in their hands and just sitting there waiting for an answer. Highly inefficient. Sounds like a little thing, believe it or not, it really speeds things up. Um, another situation, and this happens to me on jobs all the time, is for example, if we have a large sleeper sofa, let's just say we're carrying a sleeper sofa from the truck up to the third floor of an apartment complex and there's no elevator to the stairs, so I know a couple things. We're gonna be blocking the stairwell, it's going to take a long time. There's a chance we might get stuck at various points in certain parts of the stairwell. So what does that mean? What that means is that stairwell is now shut off. Anyone who comes in behind me or goes in in front of me is now not going to be able to get through that stairwell easily, efficiently. So there's absolutely no point in having someone go up to the apartment and then have us go up behind them or someone come in behind us while we're carrying the couch and just stand there waiting for us to maneuver around every corner going three flights of stairs. It makes no sense whatsoever. So what we'll do is, for example, I would say, hey, we're going to go grab the couch. We're going to bring it up to the third floor. I want you guys to clean the truck. I want you to do pet full the pads, clean up the tools, do anything you can on this truck or outside of this truck to get us closer to our goal. But I don't want you bringing anything upstairs until you get word from me that we're out of the hallway. We're out of the... um stairwell and so what that'll do is that all those tasks need to get done anyways we need to clean the truck we need to fold the pads we need to get the tools situated it all needs to be done before we can leave anyway so it doesn't matter when we do it the goal is we just do it in the most efficient manner possible and in that moment it doesn't make any sense to have joey standing on the stairwell behind me holding two boxes waiting for me to go step by step up with a sleeper sofa it makes the most sense for him to be down in the truck folding the pads that need to be folded anyway while I'm in the stairwell blocking the stairwell. Otherwise, it's just inefficient. We're wasting time. We're causing the customer to spend more money than they need to, and we're prolonging our day longer than it needs to be. So if you guys can think about things like this on jobs, you'll really speed up your efficiency, and the, your customers theoretically will be a lot more happy with you because on any given job, you have X amount of things that need to be done, so the goal is you get those X amount of things done in the shortest amount of time humanly possible. That's the goal. Guys, if you found any value in this, please like and subscribe. As always, if you need to get a hold of me, info at huskymoving.com is the email address, and our website is huskymoving.com. Thank you so much for listening.